You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody Cedarstrom in the morning, where talk is real, truth is in the talk. There's power in truth, and we believe Power Talks. Welcome to Power Talks. I'm Beth Ann, and say good morning to my partner, Melody Cedarstrom, and co-host. And Melody, I have a quote this morning I'm going to share. I think I shared this maybe on our first, one of our very first shows. Uh, truth will ultimately prevail where there is pains taken to bring it to light. That was a quote of George Washington. Where there is pains taken to bring it to light. And boy, is there pains to bring truth to light today, is there not? There certainly is. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, Beth Ann. I hope everyone had a good morning. If you weren't in Dallas, if you weren't in Houston or in Texas, I I hope you all had a decent weekend. But certainly there's a lot of trials going on in the Houston area and and all in the, the part of Texas that was hit by Hurricane Harvey. And certainly the conspiracy, uh, the conspiracy, uh, scenarios are already spreading and, but, uh, really a tragedy. And, but it's interesting when you talk about the problems of Houston and why there is so much flooding. And, you know, they blame it on the zoning when they were building up Houston. They're, they they just, you know, they just built, they laid concrete, they didn't worry about drainage. And, you know, Ooh. this was a topic of conversation for years that if a major hurricane ever hit, that they would be in deep trouble. And certainly uh, the major hurricane hit and the flooding uh, is certainly a big problem. And it kind of makes you wonder if the people who have lost their homes and so forth, isn't there a lawsuit in there somewhere? <laughs> they don't oh, gosh, know. don't even begin that. Oh, my goodness, don't even start that. But, I mean, and they did talk about it was just reckless. It was fraud. It was corruption. You know, as people paid each other's, you know, they, they greased each other's palms in order to build the, the city of Houston so quickly. There was no zoning in effect. And, and yeah, I, I have a problem when there are a lot of zonings or residential because you buy a property and you can't do what you want to on it. So, yeah, I have problems with that. Um, but on the other hand, this is a city that should be responsible and um, it, it have a drainage system so this doesn't happen. And uh, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. There was certainly warnings what, when Rita, I think, went through there, I don't know, 2005 or something like that. Uh, they did evacuate Houston. This time they did not. And um, so I... 1961 was Carla that came through Texas. And they say Harvey's worse than that. And uh, um, But even if they'd have had all the... The drainage systems and everything perfect. What what area can can withstand 50 inches of rain? They're still getting hammered. Well, no with doubt rain. about that. And However, oh my, it does make a difference. You know? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, they have to. They were releasing the dams uh, on top of this. Two of their dams. They're releasing water into the floodwaters, so they're getting a double whammy. Um, and I had to laugh at the comment. They said, well, you were releasing um, the water from the dam to prevent more damage. It's, like, <laughs> it's already pretty well damaged. <laughs> well, it is. Well, they, but if the dam broke, that would be even worse. It would be if, even worse. You know, but, uh, that uh, I you know, had to kind of chuckle at the one picture and cry at the other last night as I watched uh, all these uh uh, images of what was going on, and they had the one family was in the house, and they were chasing a fish. <laughs> they had enough water in there, and they had fish coming in, so they were chasing a fish and catching the fish out of the water in their living room. And uh, uh, I could see my boys having fun with that when they were kids. Not that I would want to be flooded. I lost a home in a fire, so I I can really appreciate what these families are going through, and I can't imagine a whole community. Mine was just a single home burned, uh, but. And then the image of the nursing home, which they didn't allow them to evacuate, and those seniors sitting there in waist-high water, uh, they did get them rescued, but uh, what a... You know, what a tragedy. And I'm just wondering what these hospitals and emergency areas are going through because they're hit to uh, the tornado warnings that are going off because it is a storm. And, uh, um, you know, there's no place to go, certainly no basement to hide in. And and I don't think that area really has a lot of basements anyway. I'm not sure. Um, 
Yeah, but it would. And be of flooded. course, you can't. It would be flooded. <laughs> you know, they're standing on their roofs. You know, yeah. they're standing on their rooftops, and uh, no place to go ha- if a tornado hits. I haven't heard of one actually hitting, but they have had a lot of tornado warnings and and uh, watches out, and uh, so it's a tragedy, you know. But what I'm seeing, Melody, is is uh, people coming together, all colors. Didn't seem to matter. They're helping the neighbors. They're helping people everywhere. They're taking their, they ask uh, volunteers if they had flat boats to get them out and help rescue, and they are doing that. And and a nation that on one hand is rioting against racism and, and on the other hand helping one another regardless of color. And that is what America is about. And unfortunately, it always seems to be a tragedy to bring people together. <laughs> you know, we always... It's not funny, but we kind of grin when we tell everyone when we meet them for the, you know, haven't seen them in a long time, and then you meet them at the funeral home. Well, we need to meet other than at the funeral home. Well, America needs to come together before there's a tragedy, Uh, but it always seems to bring a tragedy to pull people together. My favorite story, (laughs) and and right, there's so many tragedies, so I guess we kind of look for the one that's a little more not so, so desperate. But there was this dog. It looked like he was a German Shepherd mix, maybe with a a retriever. And he was, uh, the family left the home, but the uncle or someone came over to sit at the home while the, 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 the parents and the children left. And they left the dog behind. And they showed a picture of this dog, and it's a town dog. It wasn't in Houston. It was one of the smaller towns that this happened in, maybe a population of 6,000. So population of 6,000, usually everybody knows everyone. And yeah. he, this dog can, you know, go to, to the Dairy Queen, and they'll give him burgers and things like that. So he's a very well-known dog in this little community. But they showed him a picture walking down the street, and he was carrying his bag of dog food. And, um, <laughs> you know, he, he went to higher ground, but he was pretty smart. He took his dog food with him. And, uh, oh, I did not see that. I saw the dog <laughs> that got out of the kennel. He got afraid and somehow got out of his kennel and ran away. And a storm chaser, he came up upon a storm chaser and hopped in his vehicle with him. And he, uh, they, uh, tweeted it out and put it on Facebook and they got that dog home. Uh, back to the owner, and uh, they were it showed the reunion, and that was great and wonderful, you know. And uh, it, you know, you watch all these stories, and and it it is heartwarming, but it is heart wrenching when you see that, you know, how is a community and uh, you know a a place like Houston going to recover? It kind of it kind of was like uh, nails on a chalkboard when they said on the air last night that FEMA will be there for years. That's kind of like, oh, keep, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I keep hearing that Houston is the fourth largest city in the country. And I didn't, I wanted to research that. I couldn't believe that Houston was the fourth largest city in the country. But I kept hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. I thought, well, maybe the fourth largest city in Texas. I said, no, that wouldn't be right. Um, so I wanted to check on that, and I haven't had the opportunity yet. But I think one of the things that we think about when we think about Houston is oil and our gasoline prices. Yeah. And uh, we won't know the full extent of damage. It's going to be a couple days before we realize uh you know, how and why and if gasoline prices, well, you know, they are expected to jump today. Uh, oil and gas companies, they have shut down about a quarter of oil and gas production in the Gulf of Mexico. That's about 5% of nationwide output. Um, companies is also have also been shutting down much of their refinery operations onshore, idling about 10% or more of the nation's refinery capacity. And... That might not only raise prices and create temporary shortages in the Gulf Coast area, but you could see boosts in prices as far away as the Northeast, where a lot of that gasoline, uh, the supplies are actually delivered by pipeline from the Gulf. S&P Global Platts estimated Saturday that about 900,000 barrels a day of refinery capacity has been closed, which is about 5% of nationwide capacity. Uh, they had expected um, more plants probably closed yesterday, including two of the country's biggest, uh, Shell Deer Park and Exxon Mobil. And the refinery should be okay as long as they have power. So I'm not sure, you know, there, ha- there hasn't been a whole lot of talk 
and reporting well, and, and, on on this situation with the uh, refineries and uh, um, with the uh, in an interview with uh, 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 Tillerson and Secretary Tillerson and uh, Chris Wallace last night. That was one of the questions that Chris Wallace asked him, and he said that these refineries they're probably the ones that are best prepared for such things. And he said they'll probably be okay. They they might have some problems. He said, but they're <laughs> They're probably not going to be hit like all the individuals and the cities and stuff because they they are usually a little better prepared for uh, such a storm to come in and uh, if you could be prepared for that. So I was quickly looking here on that and it says, uh, of course, New York is number one, the size of the cities. I tried to search that real quick while you were talking. Los Angeles, California is number two. Chicago, Illinois is number three. And Houston, Texas is number four. Is that right? Uh, and it's Phoenix is number six. It's surprising to think it's bigger than Dallas and bigger than, you know. Interesting. San Antonio, Texas is number seven. Um, San Diego, California is number eight. Dallas is number nine. And San Jose in California is number 10. I just looked up the top 10. Um, so <laughs> um, Texas has, uh, what, three of the cities that are the largest in the United States in the top 10. And uh, Houston is number four. So well, we've got a lot of population, a lot of buildings, a lot of homes, uh, a lot of damage going on. I think, too, when you ask any government official whether they think about the gasoline prices, of course they're going to rosy it up. Oh, yeah. They're not going to tell you the truth anyway <laughs> because they don't want people hoarding. They don't want everybody running in the rest of the country, you know, pumping up the gas and storing it and everything. So naturally, anytime I think in a situation where they ask an, an official, well, what do you think is going to happen to, you know, not, of course they're not going to respond truthful, truthfully. They don't want to start any panic. But I agree, I think. They're probably, now, if it was a more severe hurricane, and yes, it hit the shores at, at, um, as the number four, but that only popped up right as, right before it went landfall, I believe, but the flooding, and I think they would be protected more against the flooding than they would the actual, um, and I don't think, I don't think Houston had, 115 mile an hour winds and so forth with the surrounding areas. So hmm. it's only when it came on shore with the winds that strong, I believe. So we'll find out in the next couple of days. But yeah, you'll probably see a little bit of increase, and it depends on you know a lot of your local companies if they want to take advantage of the the situation and, and increase their prices and so forth. But that always happens anyway. It's just it's just the way it is. <laughs> Hey, the there's a disaster. Let's take advantage. <laughs> well, we filled up all our vehicles last night. I did, night. too. <laughs> but in our defense, they were running on empty. Was, <laughs> we had to fill them up anyway. I but, very uh, rarely ever let it go below a half a tank. I mean, a nice woman. very rarely. And it was a quarter. So I did go and fill up, uh, but very rarely do I ever let it go below three quarters of a tank. You know, my husband took my car, and he says, then I'm going to take the truck. And I said, well, you want me to just come along rather than t you taking two trips? No, I'll just fill them up. He said, it's raining, too. Then he goes up. Uh, my, his mother lives up the up a few blocks from us, and and uh, she was saying hers needed filled, so he took hers out and filled hers up. So he, he was the gas guy yesterday, <laughs> filling everybody's tanks up with gas. So. We got her done. Anyway, there's we're the music. To, we're heading into a break. It, I hear it. We're going into a break. I want to. I want to talk. I think you've got some things we want to talk about. I want to throw this, this little. Is common sense gone with the wind? Has it just gone? I don't think it's gone completely. But I'll tell you what. Uh, we see this tragedy that's going on, and we still see this insanity, insanity, going across this nation regarding our history. So we're going into a break. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. If you're listening in Texas, we want you to know our prayers are with you. 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app. 
for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone. Absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com Worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. And the number to call for you to join us in conversation is 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. We were, earlier we were visiting about, um, about the, uh, the, uh, Hurricane Harvey and the devastation and that it's the havoc that it's re- Reeking over, uh, Houston, Texas and all, and several other places in Texas. Um, the flooding and uh, the damage that it's doing, those that are still needing rescued, I think they've about got that, but it's not done throwing the water down. And, uh, my question was when we went into the break, uh, is, has common sense gone with the wind? <laughs> uh, my mother, Melody, she wasn't a moviegoer, but I guess she was when she was young before she was married. She she talked about Gone with the Wind, how many times she went to the theater to see that over and over and over again. She just absolutely loved that movie. Well, this is coming out of the Daily Caller, this particular article, and it says the famed theater ends a 34-year 30, tradition of showing Gone with the Wind because it's insensitive. So are we going to take all the books off the shelf, too, that have to do with that era of time? In, uh, but because if you remember uh, Gone with the Wind, it it showed both sides of that war. It showed both sides of that war. Yes, she had a slave that was with her. But it showed both sides of the war, and it was really about, <laughs> it was really about her <laughs> and her spoiledness and and uh but they're going to quit airing it and uh after 34 years because it's insensitive well, that's that's everything has just gone totally insane and yes, um common sense has gone with the wind no we still have it right here on power talk yes we do and lots of it and we also <laughs> have someone else that has a lot of common sense and that's oscar and oh, he's, he's our call- favorite and he's calling <laughs> us today good morning oscar good morning ladies how are you today 
very well, fine. Good morning, Oscar. What okay, do you got for us? Uh, I got a couple of points that I would like to uh, talk about. Uh, the first one is uh, in regards to the terrible storm, what happened to the poor people in Texas. My heart goes, the heart and prayer, prayers goes out to them. And I'm, yes. I'm so sorry that that had to happen. And uh, I pray to God that uh, he would send some relief emotionally and, and physically and otherwise to those poor people. Uh, with that being said, uh, I, I would like to uh, touch uh, on something that uh, Bethan said about the terrible disaster that we have here in our country with the history, with our history, what, what's going on, the division of the people and everything. Uh, I have to say this because it's burning my chest. Uh, if we remind ourselves to back to the history about a hundred years ago, what happened in Russia when the Bolsheviks took over in those years, it is exactly what's going on in here. We are living under a tremendous dangerous time here in America. The same mm. movement of people are trying to destroy our republic. And the tools that they're using is the association of the people trying to put the people against one another and keep the people under, I mean, in power, completely under, you know, their food, because that way it is a lot easier for them to control everybody. Now, we have to look really deep into the thing. Who are these people? Who are these people that are doing all these things? Uh, there's somebody that lives in, in Washington, D.C., two miles away from the White House, in an $8.1 million home. And this one person was the president of this country for eight years. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much is the, the salary for the president a year. Let's say it's $400,000. $400,000 for eight years. It amounts to $3.2 million. Now, I'd like to know what was the other job of this person to acquire for the rest of the money for the $8.1 million home that he lives on. He lives under a bunker which is controlling the resistance to the government of Mr. Donald Trump. And he's got a 32,000 private army. I'd like to know where is the legality of that? And I'd like to know if the people of America knows about these things. And with all of that being said, I'd like to ask my fellow citizens a big, big, big one trillion dollar question. Here we are worrying about the statues, worrying about this, about that, who wore the color of the jacket of this, who is is, 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 who was the tall one, Jackson, who was uh, General Lee, who had the slaves and everything. Now the situation that we're undergoing here internationally, I believe, is far more dangerous than that. I'd like to ask my fellow Americans this question. What are you going to do if Mr. Kim and Young from uh, North Korea decide to launch an EMP attack on America? Or if the Russians decide to do that because they're going to be so ever fed up with all these things they're talking about them and everything from these insane people in Washington, they have the same capability. And so those, and so that's the, the Iranians. Now I like to ask my fellow Americans this question. How are you going to flush your toilet? How are you going to put gas in your car? Where are you going to get transportation? There's going to be no food. No water, no gas, no nothing. And there, instead, you are worrying about who's got the statues and what square somewhere in, 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 in a central location in the city. That, we have become silly. Pardon me, ladies, but this is horrible. America, please, we need some common sense. We need some respect. We need some care for one another. And, because if this thing with the EMP ever happens, we're all going to die. That should be our priority, our number one worry, not about the, the statues. Stop being silly and concentrate on the real issues. This is what I have to say this morning. I hope I wasn't too, too harsh about it, but, you know, it, it burns me up to see the people worrying about 
stupid things and ignore the real issues. I wish you the best, and thank you for taking my call, ladies. Well, he's absolutely right that uh, we're we're distracted by so many things that are going on, and we're not concerned about what's really at hand. I, I was having a little trouble understanding. It was a the uh, line was just a little bit uh, broken on my end, but uh, um, I'll tell you what, Oscar has an awful lot of wisdom, and we need to listen. You know, and he had, he started out his phone call. Um, uh, talking about Russia and the Bolsheviks and so forth, and it very much is. I mean, the Bolsheviks, I believe, was, you know, led by Lenin and, you know, everybody, but nobody talks about it. No one focuses. Everybody focuses on these, you know, they're all distractions. Mm. They're all distractions. Uh, you know, the, the media has, you know, focused on what's going on in Washington instead of what is the heart of all of our problems. Uh, it is truly a divide and conquer type situation. And, you know, there's, there's, there's fake news on both sides. People are confused. Uh, again, they're like the little ants in the end here being stirred up. They, they don't know what to follow. And yet they, they focus on all the wrong things instead of the true heart of the problems. And, you know, we have a you have a Congress, you have the media, you have Wall Street, you know, and it all comes down to finances. That really, truly does. Mm-hmm. Um, they have used that against us. Wall Street, as far as I'm concerned, has financed the destruction of this country, and it continues to do so. They place the people in a where they can't save for themselves or for their retirement. They've been forced into 401ks and and other retirement plans to where the government truly controls your money, and, and yet, uh, um, and yet, we just go along with the program, and so. Well, I even uh, read. Yeah, I, I'm I getting a lot of beeps in my ear, so we're getting we're getting some callers that we have sparked. Where um, I read somewhere, and I just read the title. I didn't get to get into the article in depth where the government's coming up with some plan, which we all know they would, to get into your retirement, your 401ks, and those that you have there. You want to go to the lines? Are you ready to go to the phone lines? Yes, Melody? let's go ahead and do that. Yes, please. Okay, we have let's Neil. Go to ne- Neil from Missouri. Good morning, Neil. How are you today? Good morning. Well, I'm doing fine. I just uh, have an answer for Oscar, you know, as to what the people need to be doing. You know, Revelation 18.4 says, Come out, of her, my, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins, nor receive of her plagues. So if you mm-hmm. want to survive this coming collapse, you need to do that. You need to get out of the system. You need to get your land out of the system by getting the federal land patent on it so that you have absolute 100% control of the property. Arm yourselves, prepare to defend your property against looters and vandals and, and uh, what have you when this system collapses because the people are going to come pouring out of the cities because there's no food there. You know, within three days, every city in this country except Salt Lake City is going to be out of food. So the people are going to be going into the countryside, and you're going to have to be able to defend yourselves. Now, if you want to defend and you yourself know, and your, your electronics from an EMP, the best chance you have of doing that is keeping your vehicles and things parked underground. You need at least 10 feet of earth to uh, prevent the radiation from knocking out your electronics or have Faraday cages, you know, build a Faraday cage inside your garage where you can park your car in there. It'll keep the uh, EMP from uh, frying the electronics on your vehicle. Although your well, car's not going to do much heard good. That what, a Faraday cage? Yeah, I've that's not a, heard that's of That's a, a device that's used to... Uh, <clears throat> You can look it up online. It tells you how to build them. You can build them to put your radio in. You can build them to put your vehicle in, park okay. your vehicle in. Okay. Okay. You know, and, that, and what that does, it redirects the radiation around and grounds it into the ground and keeps it from going through your uh, equipment and frying it. Okay. So, uh, But if you have large enough caves or if you build your place underground, you can park underground. Uh, but you're not going to be able to really go much of anywhere anyway after this happens because the roads no. are going to be all... You know, you're going to have looters and vandals and, and gangs, you know, controlling all the roads, and, and they're just going to jump on you, take all your stuff. So you need to have a place where you're secured, and you need to get out of the system. You know, get your uh, get your paper invested in uh, survival supplies, have a little gold or silver coin on hand for doing trading with people that are still trying to make, you know, uh, make their way on their own without having to attack their neighbors and take their stuff, so... 
Uh, and yeah. the best I appreciate place, it. Best yeah, place thank you. Exactly I have never heard we of are. that before. So. You know, the, really, the best place is the Ozark Mountain Range. Now, I've been coast to coast and border to border, and there's no place that has uh, year-round food, water, and shelter available if you know how to survive off the land. You know, but the Ozarks is the easiest place and would be the easiest place to survive. <laughs> just, just talk to us, Hillbilly, and we can do group. or can't we? <laughs> right. That, right. There's a lot, have, a lot of caves. I mean, it's called the cave state for a reason. You know, yes, that's true. There are a lot of caves. That's, true. Make you that's cave. for sure. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Uh, we have Joe from Arkansas. Let's go on to him. Joe, how are you today? Yeah, I'm all right. And how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah, I really liked Oscar's call, and I thought he was absolutely right on. And, uh, and what I find absolutely amazing about the situation right now is how much it perfectly lines up with what uh, a man named Dimitri Dudeman said he was shown in a vision of what would happen to the United States. And uh, Dimitri Dudeman was an evangelist that came to, from Romania that came to the United States in the early 1980s. And he said in the early 1980s, I believe it was, that he was shown a vision by the Archangel Gabriel, what would happen to the United States. And he said he was shown all the big cities of the United States and was told these are all Sodom and Gomorrah and they're going to burn. And then he was shown that there would be a civil war started by communists around the middle of the country. And while the government was kind of preoccupied dealing with this civil war, then the United States would be attacked by a coalition of enemy countries led by Russia and China, and they would nuke all the major cities of the country. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen. You know, I don't know for sure this is going to happen or anything like that, but I just find it absolutely amazing, you know, how everything is lining up right now, that that is a very, very, very possible scenario. Mm. And the other kind thing I'd like to say thought. is, um, what? I said that's a scary thought. Yeah, 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 it doesn't sound nice. <laughs> but um, but it's very realistic. It's very possibly what might happen. And uh, Well, America needs to turn and around, other, and they yeah. need to do it very quickly. Absolutely, yep. Uh, but uh, I kind of like... Uh, it's kind of doubtful that they're gonna. You know, you can talk about things like this, but um, but people don't seem to. Uh, but people don't seem to listen to common sense, you might say. But uh, I'd like to say something else about um, this Antifa group. And, and you know, it, it looks to me like it's getting very big and very dangerous, and it's supported by so many of the mayors and police chiefs of the big cities and so on like that. You know, which especially makes it dangerous. And I think another, uh, I think a better term for it is anti-First Amendment. Because they're not really anti-fascists, um, mm-hmm. but um, but it looks, it seems to me like the thing that would help most to deal with it is I think there are millions of good people, tens of millions of good people in the United States. You know, Trump supporters, people like that, good, solid citizens that are perfectly capable of dealing with it and putting it down. I think what Antifa is creating is actually an armed insurrection against the legitimate government of the country. You know, absolutely, that's what it is. And I think the good people of this country, the Trump supporters, tens of millions of them, could deal with it, you know, very capably, very responsibly, very well, very effectively, except they have no legal authority right now to do anything except talk and express their opinion, say they don't like it, which a lot of them are doing. But if the Trump administration would somehow, you know, give all these good citizens of the country you know, some sort of legal authority to, you know, forcibly, if necessary, put down this anti-fa insurrection against the legitimate government. You know, personally, I think that would that would really help the situation. I don't think the Trump administration is going to do anything like that, but you know, I feel like I ought to get the idea out there. You know, because uh, I think the people of this country, if they had the legal, if if they were still, you know, the militia that our founding fathers. Uh, set up the country so that the good citizens would be, you know, if there was still the militia that the founding fathers intended there to be, you know, around, uh, then, you know, then those people, those good citizens uh, would be able to put down an insurrection like this. But since there's not anything like that anymore, it looks like, um, it looks like this um, insurrection uh, by Antifa is uh, really going to cause a lot of trouble and, you know, really, really wreck things in this country. Well, I, I, I kind of, I, 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 personally, I do believe the militias are still around, and I do believe that um, in the, you know, 
I can't say anything more than that. Um, I was told a very long time ago that, uh, um, well, I believe they're there. And, but I just don't believe you could unleash the, the public, uh, to take care of, uh, situation because there's nuts on both sides. You know, I mean, you talk about chaos and so yeah. forth, you know, no, I, I, I can't go along with that. Um, but I do believe, number one, we should, well, we can't change anything unless, we, and I think Oscar said the thing, same thing, and you said, we need to bring God back into this country. And until we do that, until we recognize God and bring him back in in our decisions and so forth, we have a very difficult battle. And I find, I just don't see things changing until we do. When I hear God mentioned in the White House, it certainly is a, a beginning, um, but again, we have to bring it a little bit further than, than just the, the White House. Um, yeah, we have a difficult battle, and, I, and this is what we, that's why we talk about planning and preparing for various situations. Uh, we are going to have civil unrest. We already do. I know it only is going to get a lot worse. And I know the person that you spoke of, the Diedelmeyer, was that his correct name? Doodlemeyer? Yeah, Dimitri Doodleman. Doodleman. Uh, I heard Dudelman. about his calls for, Doodleman. I heard about his calls for, uh, uh, civil unrest, and I believe he also said that there'd be war with the, with the Latin countries. I think that was another part of, of his prediction. And when you look to Venezuela and you look at the sanctions that we're placing on them, there's even discussion of military action against Venezuela. Brazil comes out and says, you better not go in there or you're going to have to deal with us too. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things that are brewing that certainly brings a lot of predictions over the years and, and so forth uh, true. Even Revelation talks about what a I, uh, the, the army that they talk about, the only army that would be able to have that many people, that many um, warriors, would be Russia and China combined. So, yeah, I mean, you can just go to the Bible and it'll tell you what's going to happen. It just doesn't give us the time, but we certainly see the, the things that are beginning to come together. Um, so, we have difficult times ahead of us. And. Uh, I think getting the truth out, getting and sharing and, and trying to make people understand education, uh, it's, a, it's a tough battle in presenting the truth. Not presenting the truth, but getting people to accept the truth. Um, well, well, the thing about bringing God back is it seems like, you know, God never comes back. You know, a, a whole country never brings God back in a massive, you know, sort of way. Uh, you know, God comes, God comes back, you know, people bring back God back into their hearts and minds, you know, sometimes, sometimes people do, not always, you know, mo- uh, most people don't, I think, but some people, uh, sometimes bring God back into their hearts and minds, you know, little by little by little, one person at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't seem like God ever comes back to a country in a massive sort of way. Except when bad things happen, <laughs> then everybody turns mm-hmm. to God. But... Well, you know, we've seen that before, but we have, you know, we had the great revival and that started with one man praying and then two men praying and then Mm -hmm. it just kept escalating into where, you know, the cops didn't have any work to do because things had switched or that doesn't mean there weren't some bad people, but this nation has gone to a time like that where we just don't hardly see, we do see good people and we're seeing that in Houston, we're seeing that in Texas now where good people are coming together, but they're still worried about the looters and the thieves and, and others that will come into the, to the area when the water subsides and what they'll do. Uh, but we go back to, uh, you know, to uh, Second Chronicles 714, if my people were called, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. As long as we have abortion going on and we're okay with that, I don't see this land being healed. No. 
I really don't. You know, today Trump reversed the Obama policy on surplus military gear for police. I could argue the positives on this one and the negatives on this, but Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced the change. It was first reported by USA Today. It was at a speech at the Fraternal Order of Police in Nashville today. And it will remove restrictions on the kinds of surplus military gear the Defense Department can turn over to local police departments. The executive order will ensure that they can get the life-saving gear that you need to do your job and send a strong message that we will not allow criminal activity, violence, and lawlessness to become the new normal. Um, This Obama um, policy came on in 2014 during the protest in Ferguson. And so... I don't know if this you know, is a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> well, like you said, there's there's different ways of looking oh, at know. it. I have family in the in the uh, law enforcement arena, but you see these gangs coming in here, and they are militarized to the hilt. And we do want our uh, our police force to also be that way. Uh, but you know, it seems that. Um, you know, we don't want them. We saw what happened in Ferguson, and and uh, but we also see that these gangs that are coming in here that have uh, uh, the cartel and all that, they have all kinds of militarized equipment, and we do want we do want our police force to be well equipped to handle that. But it is a kind of scary because they'll also be well equipped to handle a citizen rising if that should happen as well. And I believe we're heading into break, Beth. Already? Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to give the number out. We've had some great calls today. We really appreciate that. At 717-300-1218 is the number to call. At 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann with Power Talks, bringing you truth to empower you. We'll be right back. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. 
Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Return with Power Talks. We're in the final segment of this morning's show on this Monday, and uh, your calls are welcome at seven one seven three hundred twelve eighteen. Melody, you had some financial. Yeah, I, I, I do. I just wanted to let the listeners know, and everybody knows that uh, I am the owner of Discount Gold and Silver Trading, and gold today is up seven dollars and thirty cents at twelve ninety nine. We it has to close above thirteen a couple of times for the next leg up. We keep getting close. They knock it down, and it reminds me when gold was getting ready to pass the one thousand level, the one thousand dollar level, and they just kept hitting, and it would fall down, kept hitting, and it would fall down, and then of course once it went over. 1,000. We ran, it was run all the way up to 1,900. So I had a nice run. It this reminds me of the same similar type situation. The stock market is, you know, at record highs and so forth, and uh, gold just can't close above that $1,300 level. So maybe we will today. Maybe we will this week. Uh, I think after the uh, Labor Day weekend, I think things will get heated up. And mm. um, so, but we had a nice run in gold today, up 7:30 at 12.99. Silver up 20 cents at 17 dollars and 35 cents. We have platinum up two dollars, 979, and palladium is up five at 935. So a nice move in the, the precious metals sector. There's a little pressure on the Dow and the S&P. The Dow's down about uh, 25 points at the moment. So, uh, but I do want to run a little special. You know, Oscar called, and and, and I do appreciate. Oscar and oh, last man. week he was talking about us staying on the air and so forth and and what we do sell with discount gold and silver those funds do get come back into programs and this is one of them and so but not only do we ask you and we will take donations too but not only does but why get something that will protect you and you know, people talk about buying gold and silver for trading. Well, gold and silver is, that's an important part of gold and silver, but gold and silver is very important to protect your savings. So don't have a lot of savings in paper and think that you're just going to be getting a little gold and silver just for, for trading or for using in the future in case, you know, you have a situation where you might need it to purchase something. Gold and silver is much bigger than just trading. It protects the savings that you have in paper. And it is the insurance policy for your wealth. And this is something that has been kind of left to the wayside. I try to... to, to to, to talk about it and to stress the importance of gold and silver. And so you have to look at your investment portfolios. You have to look at how are they protected. Do you have them protected with gold and silver? If you don't, call me at 1-800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. We do have precious metal IRAs. If you don't want to uh, take physical delivery of your gold that you still want to uh, keep it uh, in, in an IRA. We have precious metals IRA that you can open up. And my first direction is if you can, always take physical delivery of your gold and silver. But the IRAs are there if you prefer that. So I have a little silver package. It's 90% silver. And since Neil had mentioned trading and buying things, this is a perfect item for you to own. It's the 90% Silver. Remember when it was uh, prior to 1964 when the coinage had silver in each quarters and dimes. And this is what we have. We have a selection of quarters and dimes. And it's 90% silver. It's still spendable. You can still take it to the store and spend it. Of course, you're not buying it for that only reason. You're really buying it for the silver content at a very cost-effective price. You're paying 50 cents over spot for your silver on these coins. 50 cents. That's cheaper than it would be if you purchased just one ounce bullion silver. 
So it's a very cost-effective way to buy your silver, plus you're getting legal tender that in an extreme emergency, if you had to buy that loaf of bread at the store, you can actually take your quarter or your diamond and go there and buy some bread if needed or trade or barter. Um, because you always, when you barter, you always want to have something that the other person is going to want. And they will always want gold and silver as the monetary, as they are the monetary metals. So we have a $25 face value of 90% silver, and it includes your shipping costs for $340. It's $340. You can buy one package or 100 packages. We don't have a a limit that you can purchase. It's a great time to be buying 90% silver because we've recently seen premiums on the 90% silver of $3.00 over spot and today you can buy it at 50 cents over spot 1-800-375-4188 visit our website at dgscoins.com sign up for our weekly newsletter that will come out today so it hasn't gone out yet so if you sign up uh, you can get our current issue that will go out later this afternoon that's awesome that's a great that's a great package Felity it's 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 really nice to have 90% silver. And when I give mm-hmm. and when I give my opinion on what people should purchase, I always look at what you're paying, and I compare it to other items. When the premium was, you know, three dollars over spot for 90% silver, people were better off to buy the one ounce American Silver Eagles. But there wasn't that much difference. So why? And I know historically the 90% silver uh, is a very cost-effective way. But once those premiums get up there, yeah, maybe you want to look around to see what else there is uh, when you're comparing premiums. And I don't think there's any. There's very few dealers in this country, particularly in the venue that I am, uh, where I advertise and so forth, will give you that type of advice. So make sure you give us a call at 1-800-375-4188. Well, we talk about uh, common sense being gone, and I don't believe it's truly gone, but we sure aren't seeing a whole lot of it in in the media, um, what they're portraying, what they're the things that they're covering, and then we're sure not seeing it in these uh, hate groups. And I'm talking about both sides. I'm the mom, and it takes two to fight, and there is both sides. Um, I had a caller on my show last week said uh, he was from he had been in intelligence. Uh, in the military and he said if you can bring people down to two choices he says then you have control so if we're going to continue to call ourselves the left and the right you know we've got two choices you know you're either a a, a, a white supremacist or you're not a white supremacist you know it just it comes down to two choices but what are we going to do how is this playing out with all these monuments and and um, statues and such for a time in our our history of the United States of America, uh, had it not been for the Civil War, there's a lot of things that wouldn't have happened. Um, and some of that is good and some of that is bad. But they're threatening to uh, to go after, they are going after, Mount Rushmore. This is an icon in in the United States. And uh, they're they're uh, talking about going after it and destroying it, and they have all kinds of threats on it. And they said they don't take these threats lightly. They're not just shrugging them off. They take them all seriously. What would happen in the United States of America? How would you feel? I know we're just about out of time. If somebody destroyed that monument, I've never been able to go out there and see it, and I would really, really love to. But how would America feel? If all of a sudden Mount Rushmore wasn't there, the faces of those presidents were gone. You know, we're removing statues, we're removing monuments, we're trying to remove everything that has to do with the history of time because it's it's too sensitive, it's too insensitive, it's, it's a, a reminder of a bad time in our lives. Well, but everything is for a purpose and uh, I just wonder how people would feel if that really disappeared. Well, you know, I think we're seeing a change, and most people in this country, I wonder if they even know of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, they certainly probably don't teach it in school or show you pictures and so forth. Well, not probably a good way, of, anyway. And I, you know, most of the people in this country that probably doesn't even know where where those states are. I don't know, but 
I don't know. I mean, we've really come to a, a point where, you know, what does our future hold as far as this country? And there was a quote, I can't remember who was it by, about America is great because she is good. Mm. And if America ceases to be good... She is going to no longer be great. Be great. That's Alexis Day Tocqueville. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh-huh. And you know, I'm going to leave it there because I hear mm. the music. I do too. Is it amazing how fast this hour goes? <laughs> we. Uh, I'm going to read that that uh, that uh, quote that I started out with. Or I think I am with George Washington and I want you to think about that as we go through this week truth will ultimately prevail where there are pains taken to bring it to light and it does take pains to bring the truth to light and uh, Power Talks will be back with you tomorrow visit crosstheborder.org c-r-o-s-s crosstheborder.org to get your print EPUB or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today. So you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.